There was a drone attack on Russia's Voronezh region on the night of October 28. This was reported by Russian telegram channels. An explosion and fire occurred as a result of an attack by Ukrainian kamikaze drones on the ethanol spurt distillery. As a result of the fire, the plant's building was seriously damaged, and one of the barrels in which the alcohol was stored was burnt out. At the same time, two nearby residential houses and a farm building were also damaged. It is said that at least one person was injured as a result of the incident. The ethanol spurt plant was attacked by Ukrainian drones on October 22. As a result, an explosion and fire occurred. It should be noted that distilleries in Russia are also used to meet military needs. These plants produce fuel and explosives for military equipment. The Russian Ministry of Defense announced that 10 Ukrainian drones were shot down over the Voronezh region. Russian state TV released footage Saturday of what they said were Russian sappers searching for and detonating mines in the Kursk region. According to the video story the sappers worked on the territory from where Ukrainian forces have retreated. In Russia, air defense brought down 17 Ukrainian drones over four regions near the border, the defense ministry in Moscow reported Saturday. Also according to the Russian defense ministry, Moscow's troops have continued eking out battlefield gains in Ukraine's industrial east, capturing the hamlet of Oleksandropil in the Donetsk region. Russia has been conducting a ferocious months-long campaign along the eastern front in Ukraine, gradually compelling Kiev to surrender ground, but Russian forces have struggled to push Ukrainian forces out of its Kursk border region, following an incursion almost three months ago. Чаще всего это кассетные боеприпасы, типа ПФН, типа колокольчиков. Желательно ликвидировать такие боеприпасы на месте, но его возможно и обезвредить. Чаще всего они без самоликвидатора лежат на замаскированной в траве. Три. Вот вчера в середине мы там все прошли. Основная задача наша – это обезопасить освобожденные территории как бы для мирного населения. То есть мы идем, да, мы следуем, мы идем следом за штурмовыми подразделениями, обезрежем те, те подарки, те сюрпризы, которые нам оставил враг. Это ямку ложит мину ловушку. Также ее взводит и на и на эту мину ловушку накладывается еще одна э, мина. В случае, если поднять эту поменку, грубо говоря, то сработает мина ловушка и получается двойной заряд. Ну, то есть двойной ущерб, двойной вещи человеку. Поэтому все мины уничтожаются на месте накладным зарядом. By October 28, 5,000 North Korean soldiers are set to be deployed to the Kursk region. These are likely troops from the so-called elite unit, according to the New York Times. On October 23, the first North Korean troops arrived in the Kursk region, with thousands more arriving each day since. Informed sources in Ukraine stated that by October 28, around 5,000 North Korean troops will be gathered in the Kursk region. According to the source, the troops are part of an elite unit of the Korean People's Army. They are being transported from Vladivostok on large Ilyushin IL-76 
76 transport planes to a military airfield in western Russia and then taken to the combat zone. Currently, North Korean troops are concentrated only in the Kursk region. It is noted that the North Korean soldiers have not yet engaged in combat. It remains unclear what role they will play on the front lines. The NYT adds that it is uncertain how the North Korean military will affect the dynamics on the battlefield. North Korean forces have not participated in any war since the 1950s, raising questions about the capabilities of even their elite units. North Korea has sent troops to Russian territory. Intelligence reports indicate they have undergone training at four training grounds. The reported number of North Korean troops varies. Western intelligence and South Korea estimate about 3,000 North Korean soldiers in Russia. Ukrainian intelligence claims that North Korea has sent around 12,000 troops to Russia. President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that the first North Korean soldiers would arrive in the combat zone on October 27 to 28. The Atesh Partisan Movement has announced the mobilization of its agents into the ranks of the Russian Armed Forces, according to a report shared by the group on Telegram. The report claims that, for the first time since the full-scale war began, Russia has openly started drafting Ukrainians from recently occupied territories from military service. Agents from our movement took advantage of this and came to the military enlistment offices as volunteers. This will allow us to conduct operations within military units and gather more relevant information, the partisans said. According to Atesh, residents in the Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia and Kherson regions are being forced to serve in the Russian military, which the group considers an international war crime. The Russians reportedly promised that the conscripts will not be sent to the special military operation area. But no one believes this for obvious reasons. If you have been drafted in the temporarily occupied Ukrainian territories, reach out to us and make the occupiers regret everything they have done, the partisans reported. Earlier in October, the Center for National Resistance reported that conscription had begun in the temporarily occupied territories. The draft campaign is set to last until December the 31st, with a target of mobilization at least 150,000 recruits. This number includes a significant portion from the annexed regions of Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia, Kherson and Crimea. The first conscription campaign in the occupied territories took place in the autumn of last year. As then, recruits are now being promised that their service will not involve participation in the special military operation. However, Center for National Resistance reports indicate that many conscripts were later coerced into signing contracts with Russia's Ministry of Defense and ended up fighting against their homeland. In a report issued at the end of August, Center for National Resistance suggested that residents in occupied regions were reluctant to join the Russian military. All regions have failed to meet recruitment targets for the Russian armed forces. The overall shortfall across the temporarily occupied territories is 60%. The report read, The situation is reportedly worse in the Zaporizhia and Kherson regions where Russians have managed to recruit only a few dozen individuals.